G'day and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, mate, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1,000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. And with me today are my mates Manny Cruz and Matt Hunter. Say g'day, fellas. G'day, g'day mate. mate. All right, I'm going to stop with that voice. I'm going to say sorry I had to do that. You know, it's Australian theme, so I had to really ham it up, didn't I? But as I mentioned, in case you couldn't understand a word I was saying, this is for Bushy Hair, released on the 18th of November, 1950. It's the 604th in the series, and it's directed by Bob McKimson. You can find this on the Bugs Bunny Superstars set, and thankfully that this short on that set is in its proper aspect ratio, so at least we got that. And it's in HD, which I think MeTV showed it, didn't they? I believe they did. So I was like surprised, but we'll we'll certainly get into that as we discuss the cartoon. But in case you haven't seen this one, I can't show it here because of uh, copyright and all that jazz on YouTube. But Bugs Bunny ends up traveling to Australia, a place that I'm not familiar with whatsoever, of course. Mm. And he has to eventually contend with an Aboriginal man. And that's pretty much it. So it's like a typical chubby bugs short, but without the chubby bugs. So it's one of those types of shorts. You were saying the, the first one that got away from that chubby design was What's Up, Doc, you were saying? Yep, exactly. So this one pretty much goes back to the naive childlike bugs of that period of time, but now we're in the design that McKimson uses up until the closure of the studio. So with the trivia, there's two major ones here. I mean, the title itself, it's a reference where a lot of folks living in the bush are referred to as Bushmen, so you've got that, plus, of course, bushy hair, bushy tail, you know. I'm sure you can all figure out the references there. There are two radio references. The line, Batten down the hatches. I did batten them down. Well, batten them down again. We'll teach those hatches. Is a quote from Lucas Sallow, who, of course, is part of the Abacus Sallow team. And when Bug says, Coming, mother! Coming Mother, that is a reference to the Aldridge family where Alice Aldridge would say Henry and Henry Fonda would say Coming Mother. So that's where that comes from. There's also a Frizz Freeling cartoon around the same time called Mutiny on the Bunny where Yosemite Sam is in his pirate role and they go through a ship routine and Bugs goes, Batting them down again, we'll teach those hatches. Yes. <laughs> but that's where it comes from anyway. It's for a Luca Costello line. I actually didn't know, because when I hear that batten down the hatches, I'm thinking of Porky the Gob. I'll teach those hatches! The, the yeah. captain of Porky's ship in that cartoon. I didn't know that so, was yeah. a Luke Costello thing. So there we go. Same. Now we know something. There we go. You're learning something go. new every day, Doc. That's right. And <laughs> I'm sure everything you've learned about Australia comes from this short. Plus, I know with Manny as well, um, the Simpsons <laughs> episode, uh, Bart versus Australia. <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything you boys want to know if it's accurate in this short or not? I mean, I can tell you one thing. We do not have tunnels of love just randomly in the outback. <laughs> As, a As an Aussie, I watch stuff like this and, you know, I just chuckle. I, I'm like, you know what? I know this is not going to be accurate. I just go with it. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. At least they know we exist, so I'm happy with that. We'll start with you, Matt. Uh, general thoughts on this short. Well, I think it's great. You know, you were talking earlier about Warren Foster, the writer, his obsession with kangaroos. Uh, <laughs> and everybody associates kangaroos with Australia. I think it's really, really interesting that so many cartoons that Warren Foster did, including with Hippity Hopper under the same director, McKimson, I'm surprised he didn't use Hippity Hopper here, involve kangaroos. He just liked kangaroos, I guess. And then, of course, this villain that Bugs Bunny encounters, this guy that he calls Nature Boy, is a caricature, a very loose caricature, according to you, of an Australian native bushman. And he's also a precursor to McKimson's Tasmanian Devil. That was not Warren Foster. That was Sid Marcus came up with that idea along with McKimson. But the delivery that Blank does with this guy, also a precursor to a Flintstones character and ultimately spin off Captain Caveman. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the Onga Bonga Bonga, you know, that was all just kind of a gibberish that Mel Blanc did that he did for the rest of his career. Exactly right. And I can confirm to people watching who may not be familiar with Aboriginal men here, they they look kind of like the caricature here. I mean, they got they, they got the hair right and I guess some of the body type. It's, of course, an exaggeration, as you would expect. But no, they do not yell unga boonga 
Wollonga. There are literally hundreds of different languages. Australia used to be heaps of different states. It's similar to like in North America, you had different Native American settlements, if you will. It's, it's like different countries, so to speak. Same thing here. So that you had many different languages. They also do not use blow darts as per what this cartoon shows. I think it's just a generic tribal thing that they found and just made an assumption. So again, no research happened here, but what do you expect? But I do say that they at least got Australia map pretty accurate. So I was like, ah, okay. They didn't just do a generic thing. See some worst Australian draw maps in some of these cartoons, but they actually did pretty well here. But Manny, what are your thoughts on this particular short? It's been a long time since I've seen it. As I was saying before the recording, Matt and I, we are both children of the 90s, as you are as well, Anthony, but we got a steady diet of this cartoon on Looney Tunes on Nickelodeon back in the day. And there were always parts of this cartoon that always stood out in my mind. Now that you mentioned the blow dart scene, I just, oh, that sound effect that Mel Blanc does that, uh, uh, when he swallows the blow dart gets me every freaking time I hear it. It's, it's a pretty funny cartoon. I mean, it wasn't as funny as I remembered it. McKimson was still knocking things out of the park during this period, but there's a lot of clever gag. Also, the quote unquote, the baggage of the nature boy himself and the whole June bugs thing and the 12 missing hairs controversy that Matt and I remembered from 20 years ago with this cartoon. But another part yeah. of me is like, was it really as bad as the other ones of the more egregious examples from the 12 missing hairs? Yeah, it's not. I don't know that anybody outside of, honestly, Australia would have been offended by it. They went and they went through a whole library and they said, okay, well, there are 12 Bugs Bunny cartoons that have these stereotypes of different peoples around the world. That it's, it's horrible. We can't show this. And a lot of people were mad about it, and justifiably so, because obviously Warner Brothers cartoons, aside from some really ugly ones that, Anthony, you talked about, we've covered, they really weren't all that offensive. But when we were growing up, it was everywhere. And I'm sorry... Native Australians. I think this cartoon is funny. There are plenty of w wonderful gags in this one, at least. I, I mean, I love Bugs and the way he talks this one. I mean, my favorite line is probably the, I'm a big boy now, and he starts walking away. I'll do my own walking. I'm a big boy now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love that delivery. But Manny, you were mentioning some of his choice of words in this short i can't think of other cartoons off the top of my head where bugs has this habit it might be in some other mckimson cartoons i think the word is malapropisms something like that pretty much that you replace a word with another word that sounds similar but it's the completely the wrong word i know in this cartoon bugs comes down to australia and he sees the mother kangaroo and he's trying to say a case of mistaken identity but he says mistaken indemnity. And I'm thinking like double indemnity. Isn't that like a legal term? It's a case of mistaken indemnity. And then, you know, when he uh, he says, I'm trying not to get a conclusion of the head. And I'm like, don't you mean a concussion? That thing could give you a conclusion of the brain. Not only is he using incorrect words for comical effect, there's another part where Nature Boy's supposedly attacking bugs. And he's like, oh, my epiglottis. Me, you got me, Nature Boy. Right, my epiglottis. And I'm like, the epiglottis is the flap that stops food from entering your trachea. And it's like, yeah, that prevents you from choking. And I'm like, you're being stabbed by nature, boy, and you're talking about your epiglottis. And I also <laughs> like the part where Bugs calls his mother. He calls her mater. Well, the, the term is mater, which is mother in Latin. One of the things I liked about this actually was the use of music. And of course, Bugs even sings some of the more well-known songs that are used in a lot of Looney Tunes shorts. I mean, what do you think of the music in this one? Well, we got some good ones in here. First off, in the opening titles, you hear a song called Reckon I'm In Love. It's a nice little clever title. Of course, Bugs is in the beginning of the cartoon. You see Golden Gate Park and then open up your Golden Gate, California, here I come. Of course. The ubiquitous California. travel song. I thought that was pretty clever. When Bugs starts singing Strolling Through the Park one day. While strolling through the park one day. Of course, Mel Blanket sing whatever, and he sounds amazing. The scene where Bugs encounters the balloon salesman, who has a very creepy face. Like the part where he stops, like, and he starts grinning at Bugs and staring at him from the side. And I'm like, yeah, that would have freaked me out as a kid. And you start hearing Umbrella Man playing in the background. When Bugs starts floating up in the air, you hear a little bit of Aloha Oi. And Bugs, once again, or Mel Blanc, does a beautiful rendition of How Dry I Am. How dry I am. 
him, nobody knows how dry I am. And I like the little puns. He says, I'm getting cotton mouth up here. And he pulls out the cotton. <laughs> you hear a little bit yes. of uh, trade winds pl- playing as well. Down where the trade winds play. And I was when I was listening to the cartoon, I was like, there's a song in the background when Bugs is talking to his mother. And I couldn't think of the song. But according to the cue sheet, it's a song called That Wonderful Mother of Mine. Oh, how cute. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much it. I mean, of course, you know, the generic Carl Stalling little tweedly doodlies. That's that's a new term that he throws in there. His own original music. I mean, just how seamless he goes from one thing to another. And that's something the appeal of this particular cartoon that. It is pretty seamless that he's going from the, the cues of Umbrella Man to Trade Wind to this and that. And then the two performances that Bugs performs in character. I mean, I never get tired of hearing Mel Blanc's voice. And speaking of voice, but what I would do to be able to be in the studio to see Mel Blanc scream at himself during the classic Unga Bunga scene. Even prior to that, when you first see Nature Boy come up, he does that Unga, something with Bunga. And then I'm starting thinking, cowabunga, dudes, let's get some pizza. There's my Ninja Turtles <laughs> reference for the day. But yeah, and just the scream that Nature Boy lets out when he's just about to attack Bugs. I think just before he throws his spear, that, Wah! and I'm like, oh. I wish I could go back in time and see that scream done in person. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could do it right now, but my voice is straining because of allergies. But we were talking about this before we recorded this. Uh, Hank Azaria, who was still is one of the primary voices of The Simpsons, your favorite, Manny, talked yep. about the genius of Mel Blanc and how he could actually do kind of a similar voice alongside himself. And it's like when you look at a cartoon like Rabbit Fire, for example, where it's Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck imitating each other. And then you look at Bugs Bunny and in this case, Nature Boy, the aboriginal yelling at each other. They're two distinctive voices, but it's the same guy. And that's amazing. Exactly right. And also, I want to point out to everyone, uh, in case they were wondering, no, we do not have a sign saying USA 7,500 miles that way (laughs) anywhere here. Although just a little bit of an FYI, Australia didn't go to the metric system until 1974. So at least the miles part is correct, but you know, we don't have a sign of (laughs) point where America is just like we don't travel in kangaroos pouches. And of course, Australia is not all outback. You know, I'm not recording this review in the outback, like with the long extension cord or something (laughs) plugged somewhere. I actually just put on Google, I looked up how far it is from New Jersey to Australia. And according to the calculations, it is 10,351 miles or 16,658 kilometers. Oh, so apparently I think you're only about 9,000 miles away from Australia. Kilometers is 14,483. So these are for all the nerds out there that need to know this type of information or else they cannot sleep at night. So if I start walking now, I'll see you guys next year in your respective (laughs) states. Beautiful. So I'll I'll, I'll, uh, pack my bags tonight. As an added bonus, here's part of the discussion I had with Robert McKimson Jr., or Bob McKimson Jr., as he preferred to be called, along with my good friend Camden Spees, as we talk about, yeah, bushy hair. Bushy hair, so I think we'll leave, I have to, be an Aussie, throw that one out to yourself. <laughs> did, did your father ever actually um, come to Australia at all? No, he never went to Australia. However, if you will know, he created the Tasmanian Devil, which was yes. from Australia. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. He, uh, he was an avid, uh, he did crossword puzzles. And that's where he picked up the Tasmanian devil out of a crossword puzzle. And again, he had his animators draw a caricature of a Tasmanian devil, and he did it. And he put the whole thing together and created the Tasmanian devil which is the way the cartoon character looks, not the way the Tasmanian devil looks, because I've been to Tasmania and yes. seen the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> yep. Someone did a little thing that says that the three animals that were warped by popular culture, and it was the Roadrunner, the Tasmanian devil, and then the Wolverine from Marvel's... Marvel um, Comics, yeah. 
Yeah, but then um, because obviously everything about the Tasmanian Devil and everything about the Roadrunner is technically inaccurate, but who cares? Who exactly. cares? Exactly. <laughs> as long as it's funny, you know, I've definitely right. never seen a Tasmanian Devil act like the one in the cartoons, of course. But you know what? Again. Have you ever actually seen cares? a Tasmanian Devil? I'm just curious. I oh, yeah. I was, there. I was in Tasmania. Yeah, we spent uh, two days in Tasmania and went over and looked at them. They're they're nocturnal animals, if I, animals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're they're, they're pretty much uh, yeah nocturnal. From my understanding, they're they're cute to look at, but they can get a little aggressive. So maybe yeah. so. I they guess don't eat penguins, and they don't eat. And they look nothing or... like the Tasmanian Devil cartoon character. No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, but I did notice with bushy hair that the character seems to act somewhat uh, like the main devil in, in terms of his just anger he's, he's got yeah. some definite anger issues uh but it's such a great cartoon i mean i mean what are your thoughts on bushy hair itself as a as a cartoon well, i enjoyed it very much and uh it's just one of those different things that father would do from time to time using different types of characters so from that point of view is very enjoyable yeah your dad as well as chuck jones tend to tend to fare well of not like fr freeling more likely when he when he was used bugs and you would put, do it a different setting you would like do it a different time period or something like that your dad as well as, Ch as chuck jones as occasionally too but especially your dad would put them in would have put them in different places obviously you put them in france and he put them in correct um, but i think you mentioned to me camden that uh yeah it was warren foster that seemed to have a fascination with uh, kangaroos because of the hippity hopper and now of course bushy hair as well just <laughs> right because foster used that at hannah barbera we talked about that when we did the first hippity hopper where it's like he used that he would use that idea endlessly to the last season of the flintstones he would use that idea yes <laughs> for that pet that they end up getting that seems to disappear yeah. but one thing i can confirm as an aussie People don't travel around in kangaroos' pouches. I can confirm that a hundred percent. Been to Australia before, right? Yes, correct. Three weeks. Because <laughs> you met, uh, yeah, um, you in where where I, where I am in Melbourne, and um, off memory, what did you think of Melbourne? I love Melbourne. I you know, love the streetcars, the whole place. That's where I spent the most time when I was in Australia because that's where Silver K galleries are. Yeah. So I enjoy it very, very much. Uh, I love Perth also. But Perth, actually, um, I've got actually I've got friends there, but I've actually not been to Perth uh, yet for, for, for whatever weird reason I really need to go. It's, it's amazing. You can live in a country all your life and yet there's still always going to be that one place or few places you've just never been. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. But I definitely, as I mentioned before, I got to get to the U.S. one of these days because uh, you're in Florida, correct? Yes, I'm in Florida. Yeah, <clears throat> right up near the Georgia border. Ah, okay. Yep, yep. So I'm just visualizing the back now of you're, my head. You're with driving, within driving distance from me in Birmingham. Well, you're in Birmingham. Yeah, correct. Well, I'm definitely yeah. going to get to Florida, but I'm, as as you can expect, if I bring my kids, there'll be only one place the kids would want to go when coming to Florida. I can. Yeah. <laughs> You can probably guess what that place is. They'll probably won't want to leave. And uh, but Bob, I'm so glad you come on. And of course, you two, Camden. You know, thanks for uh, you know uh, helping me out. Of course, as always on the videos, Cameron. And of course, Bob, I appreciate appreciate this. I hope um, to get you back for 1951, though. Um, are you okay? Let me know. To slowly wrap this up, in terms of a rating, I will say. I enjoyed this short, but it's not a standout. Yes, I know it features Australia. Shut up. Yes, yes. But it's, <laughs> it's not a standout short compared to some of the other McKimpsons, even of this year. This one, I don't know, about eight or eight and a half out of ten. It was funny. There was a lot of great bits in it, but it wasn't as funny as I thought it might have been, but... I think about eight, eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even give it the half. I'd say eight, just because it is funny and it is legendary for Mel Blanc's performance. Bonga, bonga, bonga. But in terms of entertainment value, it's, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's, I'd say eight. 
Same. I thought it'd be funnier. I probably thought it was funnier when I was a kid. You know, the screams and everything are still pretty funny. I would say seven and a half. Well, you know? I think we're we're just about on the same page, the three of us, where it's a funny short. I mean, certainly better than a buddy short. <laughs> you know, anyway, you slice it. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. No. <laughs> but Except for Buddy's Bearcats. That's your favorite. Of course. Of yes, course, yes, there's nothing one. will ever, ever top Buddy's Bearcats in my book. <laughs> ever. Leave it at that, I think. But uh, guys, as always, thank you for watching and uh, see you later, mates. Unga bunga binga bunga. Unga bunga bunga! <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. You see, a lot of you have actually asked exactly how much do I use from the recordings into these reviews. And when I edit them, I really do try and make sure that it's all to do with the short and of course have a few funny things here and there. So what you're going to hear now, and this is just completely for the heck of it, you're just going to hear some outtakes or and things that were just when we went completely off track and we had a good time with it. And I hope it shows just how much fun we do have recording these things, even if we don't use everything. So enjoy. I'm trying to remember whether he said mater or mater, you know, his typical New York accent, you know, doc, you know, sounds like a typical New Yorker from that time period. You know, I would. Well, I probably wouldn't know. My father was born in New York a few years after this. So what are you talking about anyway? <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like my, 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 me mother was from, uh, from Philly, you know, Philly, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, and, and in know, Philly, they, where they were drinking a lot of water over there? Would you like some water? Oh, yeah, water. Um, you some water? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and my, my, gr my grandpa used to, used to talk, uh, he used to say, like, uh, he had an impression, actually, this guy, his parking attendant in Philly, said he, he was trying to park his car one day. He said, he said, hey, sport, you can't park there. <laughs> hey, we got to bring back that term, sport. I love hey, it. Hey, sport, you can't hey, park sport, there. Hey, sport, kill me, you know. <laughs> I mean, I've used, like, doc, chief, you know, kid, you know, pal, you know, but sport, that's a term we got to bring back. Hey, sport, yeah. kill me. Yeah. It's totally <laughs> Philly, yeah. So, so we're know, talking um, Philly. So we're talking Philly in an Aussie themed short. <laughs> well, <laughs> now that I think about it, I mean, uh, Anthony, what are what's like a generic term for like a you know, like hey chum bud pal? Like, what do they use in Australia? Oi, oi, <laughs> oi! <laughs> Instead of hey buddy, it's oi. Come over, oi, here. mate. Oi, <laughs> oi, mate. You want some? You, Get over here, you, mate. You want, you, want, coffee, you, want, and... you want some you want some Vegemite? <laughs> oh no, no. I hate Vegemite, actually. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, no. I really don't like it. Well, I mean, of, of course, if, if bugs had been floating on the balloons uh, you know, to Texas, it would have been something like, Well, it would have gotten there faster if you'd been using propane and propane accessories. <laughs> Now we're going to include a Tex Texan accent here. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we got all our accents. We have, you know, we got Texas. We got Australia. We got New York, New Jersey. We're all set. <laughs> we're all set. We're all set. And, and speaking of wrestler, Nature Boy, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Woo! Anywho. Oh, accents are fun. <laughs> Indeed. South, South America, take it away. <laughs> I think.